Hey folks, today we're going to build something from scratch using Modo. And I was thinking we'll build a website that generates uh, an image from text using stable diffusion and then uh, also add some extensions to it. And uh, I was going to use some of Modal's uh, advanced features like Modal Serve and Modal Shell, which uh, make the experience of building this a lot faster and a lot more intuitive. OK, so to get started, let me start with a file, main.py, and import modal. And as you might know, in order to define an app within modal, uh, you have to make this object called a modal stub. Uh, let's give it a name. And let me just make a simple endpoint. So let's call it my endpoint. And it returns hello world. And in order for modal to make this an endpoint, we need to mark it as a function. Uh, and we need to annotate it as a web endpoint so we know that it's available as a REST endpoint. Great. And then we can run this command called modal serve, which will deploy our app uh, to the internet. And you can see that it gives us this URL that uh, if we visit, uh, we can see that it returns hello world as we asked it to. And the nice thing about modal serve is if you make any changes to your file system, like if I change my hello to goodbye, then we will uh, update the application live. So uh, now if I go back to the same URL, we'll, we'll start up a new con container and uh, return the run the updated code. Great, so let's do something more interesting. I was thinking we can run SDXL Turbo, which is a new model that generates images from text uh, really fast. This is the Hugging Face model card. And uh, yeah, you, you see that in order to run it, you need, uh, you need all of this in the environment, all of these uh, PIP dependencies. Uh, and the nice thing about modal is that you can actually express these dependencies in the environment in code itself. So let me just define uh, our image, which is based on top of Debian Slim, as uh, which is usually an, a, a great base image to start off with. And I can use .pip install to install these packages. Great. And then I can actually uh, take this code and also put it inside uh, my endpoint. So f first, uh, for these imports, we actually don't need diffusers or torch locally. And so we can use this construction called with image.imports uh, to tell modal that these should only, only be imported when we're inside the remote container. And the other thing is we have this model loading code. And ideally, we don't want this model loading to happen over and over again before every inference. We only want this to happen once. And the way in modal to do that is uh, actually to use a class. So uh, let me convert my function to a class. I'm going to call it model and change stub.function stub.class, uh, indent everything. and uh, yeah, let me define the separate uh, function called load weights, where we will load this these weights. Let me uh, define pipe as something on the object that stores our model pipeline. And let me make prompt a parameter of uh, an argument to our generate function. Great. And uh, then finally, let's tell our class to use our image. And let's also have it run on a GPU. Let's say, uh, let's use an H100, why not? I mean, it's a little bit overkill, but it's uh, it, it'll, it'll be fun. Great, and then we're missing one thing, which is we need to actually uh, tell modal to run this initialization code when the container starts up. So that's modal.enter. And we also actually want to tell modal to run this initialization code during the image build itself. 
the advantage of doing this is that we will download the model weights once and then uh, snapshot the resulting model weights as a modal image and uh, subsequent startup times will be a lot faster. So after I've done that, Moodle is now building or has built the image in the background. And uh, the only thing missing is we need to actually return our image from uh, our web endpoint. So for that, um, first, uh, I'm, we, need, uh, we need to actually save it to a bytes buffer. So yeah, let's make a bytes IO buffer and then save this image to this buffer, uh, let's say in a JPEG format. And uh, modal endpoints are actually fast API endpoints under the hood. So in order to return a fast API response, we need to import it, which I will do here. And then I can return a response, uh, which has the image buffer that we just saved uh, and a media type. Great. And once I have saved everything, I actually lost the URL, so I'll run this again. Uh, I can visit my endpoint, and we can see that modal is cold starting a new container and then generating our image. Great. So we see that works. Uh, and then again, since we're using the default prompt right now, but uh, since we have a prompt argument, that actually becomes a query parameter in FastAPI by default. So if I have a different prompt, like an astronaut, I'll get an astronaut, a potato, I'll get potato, and so on. Great. So uh, now that that's working, uh, let's actually install, um, I was thinking we can actually use a LoRa adapter, which is basically a uh, a fine tune of stable diffusion that we can layer on top of the base model uh, to augment the images that are produced. And uh, there's this nice pixel art LoRa uh, that I think we can use. And it's not one of these. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, so essentially if we applies layer on top of stable diffusion, our uh, produced images will look great, much better out of the box. Uh, let's actually try um, what pixel, uh, like pixelated images look like right now. And you can see they're not amazing. And we ideally want them to look like this. Okay. So uh, actually another thing, in order for LoRa to work, we, we also need the uh, PEFT, P-E-F-T, library installed, which... Uh... Yeah, so in order to check whether PEFT is installed in our image, we can use a modal shell. So modal shell will actually um, run a remote shell with the same environment as our function. So uh, it's, it's now open. Our function has an H100, so we can see that we, we actually do have an H100 in our uh, current container, and um, we can check the list of Python dependencies that are present, and it does not look like PEFT is there. Let me just make sure. And yep, it's, it's not present. So uh, let's start our serve process again, and let's install uh, the dependency. Let's do that. And, and then you'll see that modal is now rebuilding our image uh, to install this. Cool. And then uh, we actually need to install our uh, LoRa adapter. So um, I, I don't think we need all of this code. Uh, essentially, it's, you only need to load the weights of the LoRa adapter uh, and then set, set it on the model pipeline. So I'm just going to copy uh, these lines over here, and then I will make a separate function, uh, load LoRa weights. And let's uh, copy our code over here and uh, use the pipeline on self. 
And uh, here, it's actually loading the model weights from a local directory, but we can load them from Hugging Face itself by passing the name of the model. And uh, we're in, in, in this case, actually, this LoRa is loading, uh, this example is loading multiple LoRa's, but we just need the pixel art one. So we're gonna remove this code and only have adapter weights for one adapter. And uh, yeah, in order to uh, stack that on top of our model, we're gonna also add these build and enter decorators and then um, modal will rebuild the image with this additional layer added. So we'll have to give, give that some time. And yeah, if everything goes correctly, then uh, the next time this uh, app is deployed, we, we should have better pixelated astronauts or pixel art astronauts. Let's see if it's loading. Great, yeah, that's so much better. Let's see. Um, let's try a raccoon eating a potato. Great. So our uh, our model works great. Now uh, the the next thing is essentially just deploying it as a permanent uh, endpoint. So if I run this command called model deploy, I uh, get this new endpoint, which will uh, host my app. Uh, but we can actually do something else. Uh, we we bought this domain name called uh, potatoes.ai a while ago. While ago. And, and since we have nothing better to host there, why not host this model that we just built? And we can do that by customizing our web endpoint decorator and Let's give it potatoes.ai. And uh, we've actually already set up the domain name within modal. Uh, so we've provided the DNS record and it's been verified. So this should work. Let me just deploy our model again. And now we can actually see that it's deployed at this custom domain, potatoes.ai. And uh, Modal actually also gives you uh, monitoring out of the box. So we can see that, yes, our app is starting up and uh, loading the model pipeline. And it's finally running. Great. And yeah, so we, we haven't used the, the, uh, the LoRa actually wants you to use the word pixel in order to make pixelated output. So yeah, we're, we have successfully a deployed website at potatoes.ai was generating images. Great. Yeah, that's that's all that's, that's all I had for today. Uh thanks a lot for watching.